Um, hi, my name is Carson Smith, and I'm from the USA. I come from Arkansas, where I studied, I lived most of my life, and I studied uh, graphic design and oil painting in university. Uh, I also took a few game design courses, uh, taught through one of the teachers in the humanities department, which is how I came about this project. And this is a little bit about the story behind us creating a game for higher education. Um, and we think it's like the first game of this caliber or style created for university students in the world. Um, so it's teaching Greek and Roman mythology through an online gaming portal. So all the user assignments are submitted through this built-in game plugin that uh, was programmed by our team. And they get all their feedback from the professor through the same portal. And it, it's all supplemented by Greek and Roman texts. Um, so the game is called Mythos Unbound. Um, so the, this project was started by Dr. David Frederick. He is the director of humanities at the university I attended. And how it really started was um, he, he studied classical texts and classical architecture for a long time ago. And he decided he wanted to digitize the world of or ancient Pompeii. And when you see ancient things on television, they're always just fly through visualizations kind of boring. You can't interact with the environment. So what his goal for this project was, the original digital Pompeii project, was to look at how uh, if crowds of people would move through environments, uh, houses, the streets of Pompeii, uh, how lighting would work in the houses with skylights or um, plants or things like that. Um, also how the spaces would actually be used in a house. So what people think could be uh, a bedroom might actually be a study or a library, it could be a kitchen. Um, and all this kind of became a project that he, he started in Unity and then he, he started playing with the idea that maybe this could be a game where people could play it and actually experience this a little better than just fly-throughs or um, if, a, if a professor is typing on the keyboard and saying something. So he set out to learn Unity better and then began teaching game design courses as he was learning, which were um, game design courses supplemented by classical texts. I, I took my courses when we studied the, uh, Odyssey, uh, the Odyssey and the Mahabharata. Uh, those are the classical texts we had to read pages and then uh, translate a section of that text into a playable game. After that, our professor said, well, we have a good enough basis of people that have taken these game design courses, people that are in the computer science department and know how to program, so why don't we create a real game uh, around this idea? So it started, you can see this is uh, our plan for this, our original plan for this game was, or the original plans for the project were based off the House of Octavius Cortio in Pompeii. Um, so on the left is the plan for the house that we used in the game. Uh, with digital restorers uh, creating this house again. And then on the right would be some, some reference photos we used. The students also took trips to this house in Pompeii and restored these, these frescoes and other things. So this was an early uh, version of what the house looked like. Um, but this is more when it was in the digital Pompeii phase, not so much gamified yet. Uh, but you can kind of see an idea where um, on the right down there are where um, these, the frescoes are here and the garden begins with the water on around. Um, so here's some more examples. Uh, on the top left is an in-game screenshot of what our, our restoration team did. Um, and behind that is uh, the reference photo that we used to restore the frescoes and uh, take the, the models. Uh, we recreated them. We, took photos from multiple angles. So it was essentially 3D scanning, but we had to piece everything together ourselves. Not, it wasn't so easy as taking a camera and moving around like you can now. On the right is another in-game screenshot just showing some of the interior frescoes that we had and uh, the environment where you enter the household, the, the first atrium of the house. Um, so the goals of the, the project were to immerse students in an online game environment. Um, so we could have, uh, I guess, more concrete learning ideas in a modern age. It's easier for students to uh, become involved in a project that 
they like to like video games. Students like playing video games, so approach that. Now the, this project is available to 300 or more students per semester, um, all, all online for this professor, uh, which is better than a lecture, a large lecture hall where you don't get the interaction from the professor. So we had a, a I guess, 12 person team with five artists as one of the artists. Um, we had two producers, which was uh, Dr. Frederick and his teaching assistant, uh, five programmers, and we also had an audio unit from the music department of the university. Uh, so we have an original score in the game that's dynamic. As you play through certain levels, the, the audio will change as suspense builds, and then the other tracks will fade out. And this was before Unity 5 came out with their new audio tool. Um, so since this is all created in Unity 4, that all had to be programmed for our game. And an eight month deadline from conceptualization to finished product. And then we tested our course with 30 people for our first semester. And now, like I said, it's 300 people per semester. So let's see. Um, so these are the, the, <laughs> these are the text that we based, or uh, some of the text that we based our, uh, our game off of. So um, the audit, Homer's The Odyssey, Ovid's and Metamorphoses, and Hesiod's Theogony. There's also some other stories in there as well. Uh, so you can essentially think of this game as you are a slave in a household, uh, ancient Roman Pompeian household. You are trying to earn your freedom, and as slaves would have to do, they need to learn and study Greek and Roman mythology to become part of society. So you can, as a slave, you talk to your mentor, um, the house people working there, other slaves, and they will, they will give you stories, so say the myth of uh, Scylla and Charybdis, or the, anything from the Odyssey, uh, you become Odysseus or these other classical people in these novels, and you play as them in the story. And if you didn't read your text like you were supposed to, then you, would, you could fail the mission, or uh, what, what have you. So, um, yeah, like I said, you have a, you're a household slave. So there's, it's broken into two things. Household slave levels, which is kind of like in Assassin's Creed when you're outside of the animus and you're hearing the people talking to you, or when you go into uh, these, I guess, into these myth levels, or in Assassin's Creed, you go to Pompeii, or I, I haven't played them, so I don't know, but, um, so that's the, the, the background of how this all began. Um, so here I have queued up is um, a small build, or this is one level that we have uh, where you are tasked with creating a traditional Roman uh, recipe is Trojan pork. So you can click here and it tells you what you, like your, your goals on how to make this, this pork. So I need to uh, find some uh, not raisins, olive oil and a sausage and some salt. And then I need to take some eggs and put them in the bowl with raisins and my spices. Then I should take a little, a little more olive oil and I can take my stuffing and put it in the pig. Now I take the pig and I have to cook it on the fire. So then you wait for it to be cooked for a few seconds. Um, you put it on a platter and then you must and then you have some dialogue, and there actually is um, recorded dialogue uh, for the full game. Um, all these are actually recorded with subtitles. Uh, if I can actually, where's my mouse? Right. Now I need to serve the pork to the household guests of the, I guess, the leader of our house or my master. So you come in here, and you can listen to them talk about um, uh, whatever they're talking about, people being poisoned or ancient Roman things that happen, I'm not sure. Uh, so this is just one of the levels that we have. Um, I have more on my computer I could show, um, like the Legend of Skill and Charybdis, or you are Hercules and you have to go through those myths, or um, other, other various things. Let me see if I can not be in that window. Telemachus. Tel 
if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask about the project or anything. So I'd show one more example of a level. So you said we're talking about engine woven things and stuff. Is it um, just made up or is it more also an idea like in the year 100 before Christ, this was a typical political theme because this Caesar was here and they had a discussion about the Senate and so it, on? It is a historical, historically accurate to a time period, I think. Um, a little after the reign of Nero, so somewhere around the year 350 after Christ or 375, um, somewhere around there, or maybe a little later. But it is, um, the stories are accurate and what they would talk about in the household that you hear as a slave, the, those, those are all accurate things. The myths that they talk about or the way they speak um, or what items are in the house, so the way that the the amphorae or the, the vases or what food is available, all of that should be historically accurate. The, the style of clothes they had at the time, togas and like the, the different colors, uh, dialogue. Uh, so here you are tasked, uh, uh, sorry, did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Um, so this here, you're just supposed to, um, this is, uh, the legend of, or I guess the story of Odysseus, uh, and they go past the sirens on the boat. Um, so you must talk to your deck crew and say that uh, you guys need to make sure I'm, I'm tied to the mast so the sirens can't take us over and we can't uh, crash the boat. Or oh, who do I need to talk to? Um, so you, you have to prepare your crew for what, what is coming ahead. Um, and the dialogue takes forever, so that's why I'm skipping it. Uh, and then, so that's the first part of the level. The next part is you have to navigate around various um, obstacles. So you, you actually take control of the ship, and if you hit, uh, say, a rock, you, you crash into boulders, you lose men, and you can uh, replenish your men. You have a certain amount of people that you can use left, so I'm missing three deck people. So if I, I can add to my crew, and it, they, they come back. Um, so this goes on for some time, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's all kinds of things that happen later. Um, you have to tie yourself to, a, to the mast or uh, navigate around uh, whirlpools of water. I don't know. <laughs> um, you have to, so you have to navigate, and then you have to eventually go, you have to have enough people left on your boat to go past um, the three-headed monster, uh, Cribdis and Scylla, and which if you don't have enough crew, you, your boat sinks and you fail the mission. So you know if you need to replenish at the correct time or not, but. <laughs> so all of these uh, animations were custom made. Uh, the boat was made by our artist team. Uh, the, the people were as well, uh, all, as well as the user interface and all the programming. All this was in-house uh, designs. So what's so, the part you work on? Uh, I did the character design. I did character art and some of the props seen in the house, not in these, these game levels that I have on my laptop queued up. Um, but yes, yeah, so, so I'm a character artist and a graphic designer. I worked a little with the art team on some of the levels doing the user interface. But mo most of my work was characters and animation. So how long has this game um, been used now in the university? This, oh, let's see, I graduated. Um, so it's, the project has now been finished for, I think, two years, or about a year and a half, which means that they will have one, so one year, uh, so three semesters of courses. So it should be about 600 people have taken this, this course now. Is there any, any experience and feedback in terms of the, the, the actually learning um, efforts or did, did it work? Do, do people <laughs> learn, do they, they learn more or less, have more fun and learn the same? Um, I assume since the university approved the project after our test period that it was, there was good enough feedback. Um, they fixed some of the problems with the game, some of the glitches. But uh, as far as knowing if there's a better response to learning, 
Uh, I don't know. I left. Uh, I, I graduated university after this project launched, so I never got to ask the professor. And then I moved here to Germany, so I can't really answer that question. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm not even looking anymore. But so that's that's the idea behind this project was just to teach people uh, Greek and Roman mythology and have them experience it in a more relatable, modern way. And I have more, I have all the levels if anybody wants to test them or play around with them. Um, they're, all, they're on my hard drive here with me, so. But anyway, so that's, that's Mythos Unbound, and thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. Okay.